love a lush little green girl but don't know where to start? Well, honey, today I'm talking foliage queens for every type of plant parent. So, uh, right to my left, we have an amazing green girl that is really, really easy to care for. And so if you're a plant parent newbie, honey, you may want to add her to your little plant fam. And so this is the Chinese evergreen and is a fabulous plant that is very light flexible. Light flexible means that this plant can tolerate a bunch of different lighting situations from bright light to lower light. Now when I say low light, that does not mean no light. All of our green girls need a certain amount of light to thrive and engage in what? Photosynthesis, honey. And so the Chinese evergreen is one of my favorite queens. I actually have about five of these queens in my own collection. Moving on to someone who's a diva of the plant scene, we have the Fiddle Leaf Fig, and her nickname actually comes from the shape of her leaves, which is shaped like a violin or a fiddle. Her Latin name is actually Ficus Lyrata. And so this is a tropical queen of ficus. She enjoys a lot of humidity. Her native habitat are lowland forests, so she loves a sultry scene. So make sure that you're giving her bright, bright light. You wanna make sure that you're letting her soil dry out in between watering. And you wanna make sure that you leave this queen in one spot. She is very sensitive to transplant shock, and so you want to leave her in one little spot and make sure that she's allowed to adapt and get used to her setting, honey. Yeah, she's one of the more difficult queens. I'm not even going to share how many of these I've sent to the little botanical garden in the sky. We're going to keep that secret. Shh. Okay. Moving on. So this is the Scanapsis pictus, and this queen is another one that is low light flexible. I have this queen in a lower light situation. She's actually doing quite fine. And so for a queen who's just starting out on her journey, this is definitely a resilient, easygoing kind of plant that is very easy to care for. I'm, I'm getting really excited because there's just so many lush queens here. Uh, let's move on to one of my personal faves, the ZZ plant. She's one of my top three for beginner plant parents, and that is because she's so resilient and easy to care for. You do want to get her in a brighter light situation, even though she can tolerate lower light conditions. You also want to make sure that you let her soil dry out in between watering. She's adapted to tolerate drought. And so you do not have to water this queen as often. So if you're a queen on the go and you forget to water your green girl, this is the queen for you. Okay, girl, get into it. <laughs> I'm just thinking of all the plant parents that are uh, going to watch this. So this is a, a variety of calathea. Calatheas are known to dry out really, really, really quickly because they enjoy a lot of humidity. The, one of the best things that you can do for this queen is bottom watering. Basically letting this queen decide how much water she wants to take up because she enjoys a sultry scene. You wanna make sure that you either have her in a bright bathroom or you have her right next to your humidifier because she will brown so quickly. I actually don't have any calatheas in my collection because I do not like brown edges. I know a lot of plant parents who brave it out and have a couple of these in their collection. But yeah, if you are down to care for a very sensitive queen, honey, then you may want to get yourself a little clean. Yeah. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> a lot of the green girls that we bring into our home are actually climbing green girls. So in the wild, there are a variety of plants that are actually epiphytic which means that they grow on the surfaces of walls, trees, and other plants in a very harmonious way. We often find those climbing vines or climbing queens in hanging planters. I'm gonna bring her down, the pothos. And uh, this queen is actually nicknamed the Devil's Ivy for a very interesting reason. This queen is actually considered an invasive species in states like Hawaii and Puerto Rico because she just grows so well. She grows like a weed in some states. 
which means that she'll thrive in your living room, honey, or your bedroom, or your bathroom, wherever you wanna place this queen, I'm quite sure she'll thrive. And something that I've noticed with growing this queen is that when we let those leaves, those vines hang down, the leaves actually grow smaller and smaller and smaller. If you're hoping to have large pothos leaves, one of the best things that you can do is attach this queen to a moss pole. I've actually seen leaves just as large as a monstera, even larger than monstera deliciosa leaves. So honey, get this queen a moss pole. So honey, this is a wonderful example of a moss pole situation for a green girl that loves to climb. This is the Monstera Dubai. And as you can see, this queen is clinging to that moss pole, honey. And as you can tell, the leaves are getting larger and larger and larger as she rises to the top. And so imagine her in the wild, stretching towards the canopy, reaching for that sunlight and getting those larger leaves. So honey, this is the perfect example of what a moss pole can do for your green girl. So queens, our green girls are living, breathing works of art, honey. And so when it comes to styling the plants I bring into my home, one of my favorite green girls to style is the staghorn fern. And yes, I do have a complicated relationship with ferns, but honey, Miss Staghorn Fern is one that is resilient, hardy, and quite easy to care for, okay? This queen is a tropical queen, native to Africa, Southeast Asia, Australia, and she actually grows on trees and neighboring plants as an epiphyte in a very harmonious way. And she gets her water and nutrients from the air, rain, and debris surrounding her. So darling, we are going to get into one of my favorite DIY activities, and that is mounting the staghorn fern. You ready? Let's get into the lushness. So we have our staghorn. She is potted, but honey, she doesn't need that soil to grow because what? She's an epiphyte. So now we shall depot the queen. And so what you wanna do is just make sure that you are massaging the nursery pot to loosen up that soil. We don't want to damage her foliage by pulling on her. Oh, she comes out so nicely. Look at that, absolutely lovely. So what we're gonna do is massage the roots and just make sure that we get as much of the soil off of the root system as possible. So take your time. It's okay if you make a little mess. And so a little bit about the anatomy of this queen. She has two kinds of fronds. The antler fronds, and then you have the shield fronds right here. Thank you for being a frond. The antler fronds actually contain the spores um, that are the seeds to this plant. And then the Shield fronds are actually responsible for taking in nutrients, water, as well as protecting the roots of this green girl. This soil is on there, child. So we are going to continue to massage. Take your time. Treat it like a little stress ball, all right? Therapeutic. It's okay to make a mess, honey. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Now I'm just gonna do a little test here. A little test to see how this would work. And it's still a little high, still a little high. Damn, this soil is really on there. Just gonna release the roots a little bit just to make her a little shorter. This is all her root, honey. So she's looking very healthy and ready to go. And I think this is actually gonna work just fine. So now we are going to prep her new home, honey, where we wanna have her hanging like the work of art she is. And so the first thing that you wanna do is figure out what you want to be the front and what you want to be the back. So I'm really enjoying this pattern right here. So this is gonna be the front of the board and this is gonna be the back of the board. The first thing that you wanna do is get you a little picture frame bracket. There we go, bam! And who said you can't be handy with a freshly manicured situation, honey? Fabulous. I'm just gonna make sure it's level so that you don't have your green girl on a slant. 
Ha! Woo! All right. So the next thing we're going to do is to prep the front of the board. And it's quite easy. What you're going to do is take the nursery pot, place it where you want to place your staghorn. You're going to take a little pencil and you're going to just draw a little circle. Ah! Fabulous. And so you should only need about eight nails for this little situation. And so I'm just going to mark where I'll be placing the nails. So now we have eight markings that are evenly centered in the circle and neither where we're gonna place the nail. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. As you can see, this would go straight through if I hammered it in too much. So I'm just gonna be very mindful. I just love hammers. All right, if it goes through a little bit, then just hammer it on the other side. It's really simple, very easy. Looking good, it is looking good, honey. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is create a little layer of sphagnum moss. Now this is dry sphagnum moss that I have uh, dampened with some water, make it uh, very flexible and easy to work with. And uh, you may need to wring it out a little bit. You don't want a lot of water uh, going onto the board. And so what I'm gonna do is create a little foundation on the wooden plank with the sphagnum off. We don't want the root system going straight onto the wooden board. A little bed of moss for our staghorn fern, honey. A little bed of moss. All right. So I'll just pat this down a little bit. So now you wanna make sure you're strategically placing the staghorn in a way so that when you hang her, she looks glorious, honey. So I'm just gonna be mindful of how I'm placing her. And uh, I want her to hang this way. I really enjoy this with her larger leaves kind of just like hanging down. Oh, I'm excited. And now what we're gonna do is surround her root system with moss, all right? Now again, you wanna wring out that moss so that it's not too much moisture. This is gonna create a nice little environment for her roots to continue to grow and also protect her roots from outside elements. Now we just wanna give this queen a little squeeze to make sure that moss is nice and tight around that root system. We cannot see any exposed roots, which is what you want. And he is looking absolutely lovely. These chill fronds are going to eventually engulf this moss and that's what we want. We're giving her a lot of playground to continue to spread those shell fronds and to spread her roots. So now, I'm gonna take my twine and tie this onto the very first nail, all right? Tie a nice tight knot. And now I'm gonna zigzag this twine all over, making sure that I tie knots onto every single nail. And I'm probably gonna do it a couple times just to make sure that she's secure onto this plank. So I'm going to uh, tie this off. And as you can see, I've zigzagged a lot, right? And it's just to make sure she's secure. And honey, she is ready to go on a wall, darling. Mm -hmm. 